Faith for abundance, part two. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Everything Jesus paid a price for was for you and I. He became poor so you can be rich. He became sick so you can live a healthy life. He became sin for us so that you can walk in his righteousness. Is that true, sir? If Jesus became poor for you to be rich, that means if you are not rich, then you are not enjoying the full benefits of redemption. Is that clear, sir? Because whatever Jesus paid a price for, you are supposed to enjoy it. Is that clear, sir? But beginning from today, you will enjoy the benefit. Amen. Shout it better. Amen. Amen. Here this on the well, we serve a God of abundance. So I serve a God of abundance. In Ephesians chapter 3, 20 and 22 and 21, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Now God is saying, you serve a God that can bless you abundantly, lavishly. So God can bless you abundantly and lavishly. <laughs> yeah, me people of God. If you want to enjoy abundance, seek to live by God's ways. And you make blessings available to you. You know what? By faith, you can break out of the devil's insufficiency thinking. Because the devil makes you believe that there's insufficiency. No, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Is that true? It's if that can't believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. If you believe that your sins are forgiven, also believe that Jesus died for you to be made rich. Is that clear? Don't accept one part of the gospel and leave the other. The part of the gospel you accept, the part that will benefit you. If you believe you are forgiven your sins, also believe that you made poor, that you might be what? Rich. Is that clear, sir? Now, hear this, and hear me well. The Bible says, The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and added no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, not your work, not your nation. Not your family, not the political party you belong to. The blessing of the Lord is what makes rich. So here, Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. So don't say, well, I wish I was to be in this political party. I wish I was to be in this country. It is not the country where you stay that determines your wealth. It's the blessing of the Lord. And I pronounce you blessed in the name of Jesus. So God is the author of abundance. So God is the author of abundance. Say it one more time. So you don't think that, well, if I was to be in this nation, I've been blessed. No, it's not nation that made people blessed. It's God that determines your blessing. The blessing of the Lord. Say so here. Lift your right hand and say, God, you are my blesser. I believe the word of God. And I know you bless me. Now, how I'll be telling you how to connect with God's abundance. It's available, but how do I connect with it? And I'm going to share with you some details. How to connect with God's abundance. There's a popular scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Let's look at that scripture. And I'm going to dissect that scripture and bring out some things from that scripture. Shall we read together? Want to go? But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee, underline the word power. Underline the word power. That's the key power. It giveth you power to get wealth. The Bible does not say God will give you wealth. It says he will give you power to get wealth. Do you understand what God is saying? That he may establish his covenant, which is sworn to thy father as it is, this day. So God has given each one power to get wealth. They say each of us have what? Power to get wealth. Everybody who is a child has power to get wealth. He has empowered you. 
You are the one now who will determine how. If they give power to your community, does not mean you have light in your house. You have to consciously connect it to your house. That's true. Every child of God has been empowered. Has been what? But does not mean you will have wealth. God does not give wealth. They've given light to this community. Does not mean your house will have light. Listen carefully. Yeah, they say, well, this community, this area, this county, this area has been given power. Does it mean light will be your house? That's what, so every child of God is empowered, not some. Everybody is empowered to be wealthy. It determines on how we connect to that power. So here, if you are poor, you have not connected to what God has given you. It's not the devil. I'm not understanding the Bible. I was very poor at the zero level. I connected to it and I came out of poverty. So here. Anyone can come out of poverty in the kingdom of God if he does what God wants him to do. Now, power in the Greek word is called dynamics. It's called what? It means ability to effect change. That's the power. Ability to effect what? God said, I've given you the power and the ability to effect a change. No matter the environment, no matter the economy, no matter if you're prayed by the covenant of God. So here. I mean, understand what the term it is. So it's not for you to quote it. It's not for you to recite it. It's for you to understand it. So here. Now I'm going to dissect the word power. Which is the key word. I'm going to take the P-O-W-E-R and I break it down. So you understand. I give you what? Power. So how do I connect with God's abundance? The P stands, means plants. Means what? That word P means plants. A plan is a thought or purpose. If you must be wealthy, you must have a plan. You must have a what? Or you must know the purpose why you need to be wealthy. It's right here. In A, I say you must have what? Plans. Proverbs 21 verse 5. I'll read the New King James Version for better understanding. The New King James Version. Where they just say the thoughts. Shall we read together? I want to go. The plans of the diligent lead Surely to what? Do you hear that? The pl- both those of everyone who is hasty, surely to poverty. So to prosper and succeed, you must have a goal. You must have what? A goal. Plans give you power. Plans give you what? I must have a plan. What is your plan now? Many of you have no plans. Oh God, just give me money. Just God, give me money. No, you must have a what? A plan. That's where prosper. You must have a plan. What is your plan? To promote his kingdom? To bless humanity? To bless the poor? What is it? To, to, what is the plan? What is your plan? To live your life? Just getting money and be spending? No. What is your plan? So here. B. The next word is what? The word O is organization. Is what? Organization. Develop short and long time goals. Develop what? In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, it said, God answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run. That what? That means plan. That means what? Plan. It said, Write the vision. That means. Make it. Organize your life. Organize what? Don't live your life without organization. Organize your life. Organize it yourself. People who are not organized, we know. After you have your plans, organize it. Write down what you want to do. Recording is scriptural. Is what? Record. What do I do with social time? What do I go with social time? Write it down. Do you want to prosper? Write what you want to do. The business, when will the business, how do you want to do it? Re- record, document it. Do you know you have to document even money? Hope you know. When money comes, document it. Document, I have 50,000. Out of 50, 10 is for tithe. I'm not going to answer, 5,000 is for tithe. So, so is for offering. This is, if you don't document, your spending rate will be casual. People who document know where they are overspending. They give me every quarter a comprehensive report of this commission 
So we know where we are spending and the advice this area is. That's what you do. It's a right division. Okay, what do you want to do next year? It's not written down. Is that you want to prosper? Not written down. Anytime you God bless me. No, no, no. That's nonsense. That's what? Write it down. My salary is 120. I must not spend above 80,000 per month. 40 should be reserved. I'm not giving an instance. After kingdom investment, feeding, this money should be reserved. That is, that is how people want to prosper, live their lives. You know, to be See. What's the next word? W means work. Means what? Work. If you want to prosper, you must work. Proverbs 13 verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. But he that gathered by worth, labor shall increase. Proverbs 10 verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. Organize well and work out your plans. If you want to prosper, say work. Say work. I was aboard a flight. My wife would tell you, divide the flight hours to the hours we spent about 80% to 70% I was working on the plane. Because when, I'm, when I like flying, I like working on when I'm flying because nobody talks to you, no phone call, no distraction. You can walk. I like to walk when I'm on plane. Most times you find out that distractions are too much in the day. True? Either somebody's calling you, somebody's distracting you. Oh, my problem here. Oh, problem. I like walking when I'm on. I can never fly without walking. You see, anytime I'm flying, I must be walking. Either I'm reading or I'm walking. So, God believes in work. God believes in what? For me to have four services and not repeat anything, you, you don't just jump from the sky to. You must read fast. You must read what? You, all the four times I'm not repeating any message. All the messages are different towards one direction. If you don't walk, you can't preach like that. You'll be preaching one message and be speaking English. You drink one water and say, someone shout yeah. <laughs> one of the signs of my who has not read is, if you have a shout yeah, you shout the service is over. You meet a man who reads. He, he, you have something new. You have something every day. So I hear. So we say, Pastor, that work is simple. I say, try my time. Tell you the poor type. It's simple for those. Do you know personal work is more tedious than academic work? Academic work, four years, you graduate, you go and work. Personal work, you have to come fresh every day. So you read till you die. You know, you, most of you have studied this since you graduated, true? This one, because imagine me come next week again, I preach the same thing, or last week, last month, I preach it. Will you come to this church? He said, like, Papa, 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 last week, you tell us the same thing I want to tell us. For what? Yeah, it's new every even if I preach the same topic, I must come from another angle. Say what? Tell them I walk. Work. Tell them I walk. Tell them I walk. To prosper, I have to work. Say one more time. He said, no work, great work. D, where's the next word? Is enthusiasm. That means be sold out to your work. Enthusiasm means be sold out what? That's the meaning of enthusiasm. Be sold out to your Work. That is whatever you are doing, do it well. In Colossians 3, 22, 23, amplified, amplified version, amplified. Servants, in everything, obey those who are your masters on earth, not only with external service, as those who merely please people, but with sincerity of heart because of your fear of God. Look at verse 23. That's the key verse. Want to go? Whatever you do, whatever your task may be, work from the soul. That is, put in your very best effort as something done for the Lord and not for man. Enthusiasm also means pursuit. Also means what? That means anything you're doing, put in your best. Now this morning, I did something. I worked last night when I came back from travel. Outside the country, my wife and I, by this, I was studying again. By this morning, I found out that I had some new things. I had to add more things to the message I was to preach today. This morning, 
Because on fresh inside. As I was studying this morning, I got light, which I will teach you later, not today, from 2 Corinthians 9. I've never seen that kind of light from 2 Corinthians 9, from verse 6. I will dissect it to 10 to 20 different points. I saw light from that scripture, which is not today's teaching. I said, I'll prepare it heavily, cook it well chored. Well, what? For next time. Enthusiasm means you put in what? Your best. Put in your what? Your best. You have sold that to your assignment. You have sold that to your what? You have sold that to whatever you are doing. You are not doing it any how. Say here. And how means rewards. Means what? Rewards. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 14. Shall we read together? One to go. If any man's work, if any man's work abide, which he may have built thereon, he shall receive a reward. Rewards, reward means paid for work. It means what? Rewards mean paid for work. God pays you when you put in your best. Is that true, sir? So the word for abundance is to properly plan, number one. Properly what? Have good organization. Diligently work it out and be enthusiastic about it. Then the reward is sure. Are you getting how it is? Work out your plan. Then organize the plan. Put in your best. And be sold out. Be what? And then the reward will come. Say here. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. But hear this and hear me well. I'm going somewhere. We're in an age where we celebrate skill, celebrate strength, celebrate everything, expertise. But there's a God factor. There's a what? We are this age where skill is highly celebrated. Where strength is, you know, I know all who is who. But the Bible said, by strength shall no man prevail. First Samuel 2 verse 9. Where we build that, you know, the willpower I have, I must make it happen. Hmm? And in Romans 9 verse 16. So then, it's not of him that will it, not of him that runneth, but of God that showed what? So your will too is not enough. He said, well, my skill, I'm very skillful. I'm very what? If skill is all it takes, I've seen very skillful people who are not making it. I've seen first class students who are looking for money. So it's not, it's not all about that. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, not yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of what? Skill. But time and chances happen to them all. <laughs> so I want to the seven, one and two. Except the Lord build the heart, the labor in vain, that what? Except the Lord keep the city, the which may work in what is vain. It is vain, verse two. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat bread of sorrows, for he giveth his beloved sleep. Shout hallelujah. Yes, there's a place for hard work, but hard work without the hand of God, not it will work. Hard work without the hand of God, nothing will work. Yes, you're working hard, but you need the hand of God to make things work. That's where I'm coming now. So you don't just over-celebrate what you know. Let, let me tell you something. So what is it that will finally connect me to the practical prosperity by faith? Paul speaking said, I am what I am by the grace of God. So there's a grace factor. There's a what? Grace factor. And grace is not working on its own without faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that come to God must what? Believe that's the word of them. We we'll diligently seek him. Now, in my studies, I'm not going to teach it today deeply. If it is 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, it said, But I say, He that swears friendly shall live friendly, he that swears bountifully shall live bountifully. Every man according to his bondage, so let him give, not grudgingly, 
No, for the sake of God, the traffic giver. Look at this. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every word. God says, I have grace to make you. What is a good work? There was a man in the Bible called the rich fool. He, he was not in any good work. Grace was given to him, but it was not any good work, so he died. God killed him because said, you will die this night. When God gives you grace for wealth and you are not a distributor, you will die. He said, the reason why there has to be a distributive channel for the grace to keep growing. Is that true, sir? Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm? I pray someone understand here. So, while all these things are together, I must also know that I must connect back to God who is the source of my prosperity. Are you getting where I'm going? Glory to God. And you can't connect to God without faith. Without what? And the faith has to be that I must sow seed in faith to believe that God will make me succeed. Are you getting me, sir? Glory to God. In addition to all, you must have faith. You must have what? Faith. To sow seed. Because without faith, it's impossible. We level six. And as, as long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Seed and harvest shall not what? Cease. Genesis 8, 22. To receive the optimum God kind of abundance, you must never play down the biblical building block for abundance. What is the biblical building block for abundance? Simple. Pay correct tithe and give quality offerings. Pay correct what? And give quality offerings. He said, bring all the tithes into the store and I may meet in my house. Malachi 3 verse 10. So bring every tithe. Tithe is 10% of every income you have. It goes back to the God and his kingdom. Is that clear, sir? 10%. Non-negotiable. If you want to cut it down, it's your own business. And he said, honor the Lord with the first fruit of that substance. Proverbs 3, verse 9. So shall abundance be filled with plenty. Is that through? Up to verse 10. Honor the Lord with the first fruit of that substance. Honor the Lord with the substance and the first fruit of that what? Increases. Increase. So shall abundance be filled with plenty and thy press and burst forth like a new wine. Shout hallelujah. Titan is bringing to God your first fruits. Bringing to God your what? Be wise enough to know that nothing can change your situation or circumstance until you're a giver. That is true. Until you're what? A giver. Titan is 10% of every God-given income back to his kingdom. For God so loved the world, he didn't sing, he didn't pray, he didn't fast, he gave. If you truly love God, you must be a giver. You must be a John 3, 16, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, president, shaking together, running over. Shall men give to your bosom? Luke 6, verse 39. He that sweat what? Sparingly shall reap. He that sweat bountifully shall reap. He that sweat jubitily shall reap. Jubitily. He that sweat coinly shall reap. He that sweat trickishly shall reap. He that sweat anoget shall reap. Anoget. He that sweat nothing shall reap. Nothing. He that sweat song shall reap. Songs. He that sweat preaching shall reap. Preaching. He that sweat sweeping shall reap. Sweeping. Every seed you produce after he is kind. If it's money you're looking for, you must sow money. Does that make sense? Yes. You don't sow preaching to get money. Even as I'm preaching, I will never be rich if I, all I do is to preach. You'll be a poor preacher. If all you do is to sweep church, you'll be a poor sweeper. God will clear sickness from you, but he will never give you money. If all you do is to sing and be playing drum, you end up as a drummer. You will never get money. So I hear. But let me say this to you. When you give, most times we give, but we don't do certain things. These are the things you do when you give. Hey. When giving, pray over your seed in the name of Jesus. That's when we give up, we say, speak over it. Pray over your seed in the name of who? Jesus. B, have faith. Have what? Every time you give, have faith. Luke 1, 45. C, plant according to the size of harvest you are expecting. Plant according to the size of the harvest you are expecting. If I want a big harvest, then my planting has to be what's old? Big. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. Plant according to the size of the harvest. He that has sowed what? Sparingly shall reap also what? A farmer that wants a big harvest will plant in that measure. D, be patient. Be what? The day you plant is not the day you get. So don't plant to that start grumbling. Mark chapter 6, 
chapter 4, 26 to 29. Mark 4, 26 to 29. E, part of your harvest is for sowing again. Part of your harvest is for sowing again. 2 Corinthians 9, 10 and 11. If you eat everything, you know that you will not get again. F, your harvest is a miracle. Your harvest is what? Your harvest. Don't bother about it. Once you follow these principles, your harvest is sure a miracle. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I have planted a plus water, but God gave what? The increase. The increase, you don't pray for it. You don't beg for it. Once you follow these principles, God will give you the harvest. So I hear. But let me say this. I knew about giving. I was a good giver from beginning, but I was a poor receiver. I was a poor what? In that, I, nobody taught me on receiving until I met a man of God. It was from him I knew about receiving. I, all I knew was giving, 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 giving. And I was taught in such a way that I don't ever expect to receive. It's not too long I knew about receiving. I was only taught giving. But hear this and hear me well. You must also master the act of receiving after you've given. Many of us are givers, but are poor receivers. Are poor what? Receivers. Number one, expect to receive. It's not unscriptural. Expect to what? When you give, expect to receive. How? Many things that is not wrong. It's not wrong. I too have thought that when you give, no, no. You should expect to receive. For God so loved the world, when he gave, he was expected to receive sons and daughters through. Did God just give Jesus? He gave Jesus to expect to receive us and so John 3 16. So when you give, also expect that God will give you back to you. So here, it's not wrong to expect. Two, trust God's promises. Trust God's what? That when you give, God is not a man that he should lie. Anything he says, he will do it. Number 23, verse 19. Number three, have faith and refuse to fear or doubt. Have faith and refuse to fear or what? Don't give and then begin to doubt. Oh God, oh God, oh God. This thing, with the nada, they are not giving the bank. No! God is ever faithful to his word. No nada, no dollar can stop his word. Four, tight and give quality offerings. Tight and give what? Tight and give quality offerings. Five, plant your seed to the glory of of God. Plant your seed to the what? No good. Proverbs 11, 25, 24, 25. Proverbs 11, 24, 25. I see that's kind of yet what? There is that we told them one is me, it turns to what? A Libra so shall be made fat, that water shall be watered himself also. So here. Six. Always replant part of your harvest. Always replant part of your harvest. Seven, speak right after planting. Speak what? After planting. Mark 11 to 3. Don't ever speak wrong words after you are planted. You shall have words ever what? Proverbs 12 verse 14. Proverbs 12 14. And Proverbs 13 verse 2. Eight. Am I correct? You remember God is ever faithful to bless you no matter the economic circumstances around you. You remember, God is ever faithful to the world. Bless you no matter the economic circumstances around you, no matter the nation. Psalm 89 verse 34. My covenant with you will I not break, nor alter that which has gone out of my lips. Jeremiah 33, 20, 21, 25. If you can break the day and night, then my covenant with you will be broken. But if you cannot break the day and night, forget it. Whatever God has said is eternally settled. So I hear as long as you do your part of the covenant by sowing your seed, your harvest is sure. Say here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Glory to God. Relax yourself. No devil can stop you from prospering. The economy is too small. God, when he says a thing, he means what he says. He does not lie. He does not play pranks. He does not change his words. God stands on integrity. You may not trust Nigeria, but trust God, rise to your feet. Say so here. Now you are going to pray, Lord, you are not a man that you should lie. 
What you say is you will do. The things you have told me as I put them to practice fulfill your part of the word. Is that true? You will not say one thing and do another. I stand on the integrity of your word to commit you to perform what you have declared. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, as you stand in obedience to his word, may God's commitment towards you become a reality. Amen. Because you stand and you have said you will do what he has asked you to do, you will not fail in life. Amen. Every blessing to you shall be released. Amen. In the midst of difficulties in the country where you are, I declare you blessed. Amen. Because God cannot lie. Amen. It is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. How many know that they will never suffer what others are suffering? I speak over your life, you won't suffer what others are suffering. Amen. But distinguished. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Go with a new fire. Amen. When others are complaining, you will say it is well with me. Amen. Be blessed throughout this week. Amen. Those who came sick, I pronounce you healed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name.